You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Currently on No Other Pod. I am Daniel Kuzer, here with my best buddy, Chris Wright. Don't tell Jimmy. Chris, how are you, buddy? What's going on? I'm doing well. I appreciate the compliment, by the way. That's that's very kind of you to say. Yes, absolutely. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? It was a fine Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, it, it uh, probably ate too much food, but that's what it's for. We're supposed to uh, just feel like crap at the end of the day. No, <laughs> But, you know, get rid of it. Get over it the next day. Self-love, baby. Self-love. It, it's the one day. The one day you can eat anything and everything with without any any emotions. Oh, yeah. No emotions. I mean, just eat. I, I know I had a ton of turbinado sugar and, like, my cranberry sauce, my freaking peach uh, peach crisp dessert. That No, pe- pear crisp. That's what it was. It was wild, man. Wild time. I sent you my menu because you get a little you get a little interested because you're like, well, I don't cook anything but like beans and rice. And I'm like, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm no. wrong. So we were, this is a true story. We were texting and he sent me this menu. That's like, it's like 10 or like five things you would uh, see on six things, the sure. food channel. Okay. So that you would see on like, channel. It, it was, it was like, it was like four things, but it was mixed into one. It sounded beautiful. And I'm literally eating a bowl of corn. <laughs> at that moment and i'm just like cool like looking at my corn looking at your menu like where did i go wrong in life right. i don't know where i did but i did somewhere um it was wild my friend i had some stuffing it kind of got burnt so it was a little crunchy but still delicious uh it, it was if you have wild... leftovers and you don't want them just send me a text and i'll be there in 30 minutes do you know me there is no leftovers my friend <laughs> when we go to the restaurants do i get a to-go box absolutely not it gets eaten there or it doesn't get eaten you know what i mean <laughs> So, uh, buddy, we got uh, holy cow, special guest today. I'm like, I'm pumped to talk to this person right now. Jenna Weinbrenner? You you hinted at it on la- last episode. You're like, I did. Are, are you hinting at something? I'm like, no, I'm not. That's I didn't know not what I was talking about. I didn't know it was a secret. I was kind of. Uh, I thought I thought you were about to uh, come come out with it. So I was like, oh, you're just gonna just gonna announce it. That's cool. But you didn't. <laughs> So yeah, we got Jenna Weinbrenner. There was a subtle tease last week. Did you catch it? Did you catch the Easter egg? <laughs> I, I'm excited, man. She's got doing big things. We we spoke about her her comments, uh, 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 coach coaching appointment, if you will. Um, she's also a coach of another team. We'll get into there. I might be a big time fan. Might need to get shirts made. I don't know. Is there? Can we get jerseys? Is there jerseys out there that we can? You know. I mean, we should get some kind of there's jersey. There's kids right? out there, right? Yeah. Yeah, or there's like uh, pajama onesies that I can just dress up like one. You know what I, I mean? I, you think you I'm? Can. You think no? You think I'm above <laughs> that? I am not above wearing an animal onesie. Done it before. We'll do it again. Well, you know what? You should do an interview in an animal onesie. By the way, since you're you're hyping it up, I want to see it now. The old, well, it was my wife's, and I I probably weighed about fifty pounds less. So now I would absolutely. <laughs> I'd, I'd rip the motherfucker right in the shoulders. It'd be insane. Oh, <laughs> it would be wa- Quadzilla busting out. It'd be absolutely Sleeves insane. would be just torn between your, your costume and your, oh, your shoulder. Hey, I do love a good sleeveless onesie. Uh, you know, <laughs> like like The Rock wearing those sleeveless hoodies. I'm like, what is he doing? Who's that for? Hey. Like, you try, In case you're warm and hot at the same time? <sighs> I'll never be that Why cold. did I say that? I meant I, warm I, and cold I, at the same time. I, I, caught, I caught your drift, though, but I'll never be that cool to do that, so... I don't know. I thought about it. Sounds cool. Maybe I should I should piss off all the uh, auto junkies and like uh, cut off the sleeves of a of a, a Carhartt hoodie I have. Ooh, <laughs> people would hate that. That's <laughs> well, Kansas. Uh, Somebody will catch it. Yeah, man. What what do you uh what do you want to talk about? There's a, there's like one piece of news I can think about, and then you got some national team uh, news that r- relates to the women's national team as well. So, so yeah, let's hop into the to the main main thing. Uh, Taylor hop, Lynch yeah. retiring, announced her retirement. So um, thirty years old, right? Yeah, uh, a defender, obviously. So she's played a, a 
a crucial part of the Kansas City current the, the last two years. Um, She's been know. around the block too, man. She's not a domestic player. She freaking no. played in Sweden for God's sakes. She's a veteran without a doubt. She's had a good career. I mean, let's yeah. not downplay that. She's had a great career. Um, yeah. It's 30. I don't know. It, everybody is different, right? Everybody responds to a strenuous activity in a different way. Uh, I'm 36 and have arthritis in my hips for God's sakes. It shouldn't be a thing, but it is. She's 30 <laughs> years old. Is that, re- is that retiring age for women? Cause I'd say no. I don't think so. Especially at that position but everyone uh, has different goals, right? Yes. You don't know if someone wants to be like, mm, really want to start a family or mm, just kind of sick of the sport, you know? Exactly. She may have, you know, a good career lined up outside of this. Like, yeah. you know, y- you never know, but she's contributed a lot the last two years. She's either yeah. started games or come in and, you know, the last 20 minutes and, and contributed to, to close out a game. You know, whenever we needed a, a center back, to sub in she was one of the ones that was always available and would come in so she's contributed quite a bit oh dude she played in eight challenge cup matches and 26 regular season matches started five of those challenge cup and 14 of the regular season matches so she wasn't exactly a regular starter over the last two years but like you said she was good to call on and say hey come close this shit out you know and, you know, her quality is still good. She could probably still go somewhere. I mean, let's not um, act yeah. like she has no options to play soccer. I I guarantee you she does. She's still a quality about? player. She doesn't want to, though, right? She doesn't want to, but I'm saying she could. Like, it wasn't like, you know, players being forced out of the league because nobody wants their services. That gotcha. is not the case here. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, she helped grow this club. I mean, it's a baby club. Two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um Seems like she she likes Kansas City. Um, she she she. Uh, I, who knows if she'll stick around? I I don't know. But we wish her all the best. You know, hope things hope things go well for her and and uh, and whatever she does. Absolutely. Should we get her on here? Should we talk to her? I would love to. Yeah. I'd absolutely love to. We have a lot of questions because sometimes we just breeze through these questions, baby. We we get to talking to Jenna Weinbrenner and we start going Bing Bang Boom, and I'm like. <laughs> God damn, we're about out of questions. Like, I don't like that. <laughs> for for those who, you know, obviously can't, we have a list of questions. Yeah, of we have things we want to talk about. We have bullet point type stuff. I and don't normally go off them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Dan, Dan's just. I go rogue, bro. He does his own thing. I'm trying to stick to a script and Dan's just, I I don't know what he's doing half time, but I make get, it sound it's beautiful. Like, it's like when I, when I don't mean to interrupt my wife at home, it's that my brain <laughs> Something comes to my head and I'm like, I got to say it. And it's like, sorry for interrupting. I just, I had a thought, you know, you, <laughs> you can't apologize just, after, right? You, you got to apologize. Absolutely. Yeah. Always apologize, but you got to reel it in. It's the, it's the improv comic in me, man. Like I do improv comedy and uh, I always want to just kind of riff, just kind of roll with it. You know? Yeah. Your, your transitions are so much more natural than mine. I'm, I'm on a script. Yeah. I'm, I'm mean business and you're over here just, I don't know what you're doing, but you're doing it. And it, it sounds beautiful. You got to You got to acknowledge them, man. You got to, you got to let them know that you're listening to them, that you care about what they're saying. Cause you do at the end of the Absolutely. day, but you know, it's, a, it's, it's obvious to get a little nervous. You, you just talked to an assistant coach for God's sakes. I absolutely. The first women's assistant coach in the M A S S L right. Yeah. Just M-A-S-L. M-A-S-L. Yeah. 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 Quit uh, adding two S's. Yeah, you know, it's why not? Um, why not? I haven't been to a game, so we're gonna make that happen. We're gonna go to a game. Uh, dude, you want to kick it to Jenna Weinbrenner right now? Let's go. Let's talk okay. to her. Gonna do it. Jenna Weinbrenner coming up. All right, everyone. Thank you for uh, sticking with us. As promised, we have a very special guest. Uh, you could say she's a, a rookie professional soccer player you could say she's an assistant coach question mark uh we're gonna talk about it all but i we gotta welcome uh defender jenna weinbrenner thank you so much for being here jenna how are you doing i'm doing well keeping busy in the off season but happy to be here yeah no kidding sounds like you're uh wearing all the hats right now <laughs> uh you know we kind of want to dive in a little bit uh on this podcast we really kind of focus about 
the player. Uh, we don't really jump into like statistics and whatnot, uh, minutes played, stuff like that. We just kind of want to give people a, a window into who the player is. Um, so that being said, I mean, when you, let's go all the way back when you were growing up, how did you discover soccer and, and were there any other sports you played along the way? What was that like? Yeah. Um, I started playing soccer when I was like three or four years old. I have an older brother who, um, played soccer as well. So I was kind of already there at the field with my parents and my mom was like, you know what, let's just throw her in. Um, she's already here kicking a ball around, um, on the side. So, uh, that's when I started playing, skipped the rec thing, went straight into the club, um, aspect of things. But yeah, I played multi-sports all the way through high school. I played, um, I did all the things when I was younger, uh, softball, swimming, but I played basketball, ran track and cross country, uh, and played soccer all the way through high school. Wow. Um, growing up in Kansas City, did you go to any FC KC games at all? Yes, absolutely I did. Was I was that... there last year in the oh, stands. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Did you – was that motivating for you? And also, did you have a favorite player that you watched growing up with FC KC? Yeah, I think um, it is really special to have – hometown team uh when FC Casey left Kansas City it was it was sad um I was upset that we didn't have a team anymore um but I loved loved going I loved watching Becky Sauerbrunn obviously she plays the same position as me and she was in Kansas City for a while so um so she was someone I really studied and watched um and I really admire the way she still plays absolutely she has you know stood the test of time and played for a good long while um on the highest of stages um Gosh, thinking thinking back, I mean, you're a Kansas City, Missouri native, grew up here, went to school here. Um, so you watch this club and you got to have the heartbreak when they left. And now you get to say you kind of play for that club. I mean, in a sense, they left and came back. I mean, what what was that like when you, uh, you know, to get that team back in, in your town? Yeah, I think um, when I was still in college and they were they were back from Utah for the first season, it was really exciting. Um, just hoping that they would stay here uh, when my time came to enter my name into the draft. And then um, hearing my name called during the draft to come back home to Kansas City was something um, incredibly special that I don't think I'll ever forget. Uh, to be able to come home and, and play in front of friends and family again uh, and, and family, older grandparents that aren't able to travel to games uh, is just something that, it's really hard to put into words. And I think it's really um, a special moment that not a lot of people get to live through. Absolutely. I mean, it leads uh, kind of leads right back into what we have written down here. We do make a little bit of an outline on this yeah, show. We kind of, we kind of just wing it, but uh, you know, we're as NWSL fans, you know, we don't really get a good look into the draft process. Um, it's not exactly, you know, in the media all over the place. Right. But uh can, can you walk us through your draft day experience, like beat for beat? I mean, did you know if Casey Current were interested in you? Um, were you surprised? What what kind of emotions surrounded that day? Yeah, I think that day was um, a roller coaster of emotions. I was able to be home with my family. We had a few friends over. Uh, my parents got some, you know, decorated cookies and food. Um, it was a long process. The draft, I think, was like five hours long or something like that. And um, I was actually, I was in a master's class that was only seven days long. So I was missing, I had to tell my professor that I wasn't gonna be in class for the one, like I was missing one of seven days that the class was going on. Um, so in the back of my head, like I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much work that I need to do before tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it was a long, long day full of emotions, I would say, you know, everyone was just kind of anxious waiting and they take a very long time on the draft, I would say. Like, they like to talk about every single pick. And um, when you're just waiting, not knowing if your name's going to get called, it, it, the tension starts to rise, I think. Um, I was picked in the fourth round, so that was the last round. And I think by then it was just kind of a sense of relief. Uh, I hadn't talked to Kansas City myself, but I knew that my coaches uh, were in contact with them. And I knew the staff at the time I had, I obviously I've grown up here. So I knew that they knew of me and that my name was in the, uh, in, in the pickings, but I wasn't, I had, wasn't sure if they were going to pick me or if I was going to come home. Um, so to hear my name and, and have friends and family there was a really special moment. 
Nice. I remember watching that draft and I remember the timeouts. Team had like a yeah. timeout per round, which dragged <laughs> that thing out so long that I mean, it was it started like five or six and it ended like 11 or something, something crazy. So that must have been a very emotional, emotional ride for you. But once you came to Kansas City, was there a player or a group of players that kind of took you under their wing and, and showed you the ropes a little bit? Yeah, coming to Kansas City, being from Kansas City, um, I knew J.C. Johnson um, had grown up playing around her, not really with her. She was kind of out of a couple years older than me. So um, but we definitely knew of each other. And I would say she she brought me in and uh, was happy to have me here. So that that helped. And then obviously I, I knew Lucas from the club days that I'd been here. So to be able to come back and train with him was um it was just something that I knew. It, it felt like club days again, training at Swope. Um, and it was familiar, which was nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I'm sure there's a, a multitude of stories of players going somewhere and kind of feeling too small, you know, but you coming home was able to slot right back in. I just can't get over the, the draft situation, how <laughs> you have this, you have this master class, but you're like, well, I kind of want to be drafted to be a professional soccer player. So uh, a lot of worries going on. I just think that's, that's just wild. Um, it was it was an interesting email that I had to send to my professor. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get drafted, but uh, I would like to be excused from class so that I can, <laughs> I can watch and, and see if my name is called. Right. If at all possible, I'd like to be a pro athlete, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Jenna, as as a rookie, you had an impact right away. I mean, you got a lot of uh, a lot of playing time at the beginning of the season. Um, you had to come in and guard some big name players, the likes of Alex Morgan, Sophia Smith um award-winning players no big deal right uh what what was that jump in competition like for you I mean was it intimidating were you up for the challenge what what was that about yeah I think um being in preseason with players like Lynn Williams and Sam Mewis um and Crystal Hamilton and Lola Bonta I think that kind of prepared me for what I was getting into but it's difficult being a rookie and to be a rookie center back is I would argue even more difficult um you're kind of you know, targeted as you're a rookie center back, you haven't been in the league very long or at all. So um, the other teams know that and they're going to point that out to their players during scout. But um, I think the people around me really took me in and, and showed me the ropes. Um, Elizabeth Ball, Kristen Edmonds, you know, AD behind me, I, I was surrounded by a lot of good people and, and they just continually instilled confidence in me that I was, I was there for a reason and I was, I could guard those players and, and play at that level. Exactly. You're kind of on a back line full of other badass women that are going <laughs> to help you help you do great. So I love right. that. And, and unfortunately, you picked up an injury in June and you're on the sidelines for a while. What was that recovery process like? Did you have any setbacks when you're trying to recover or any any successes? And did you learn anything about yourself during that that process? Yeah, I think obviously when you come in as a professional athlete, you've you've probably had your own injuries leading up to that. And, uh, it wasn't my first and I'm sure it won't be my last, but, uh, it's just some adversity that you hit as a professional athlete. And it came at a, a tough time when I was playing a lot of minutes. And, um, I think that was hard on the mental side of things. I, I obviously didn't want to be injured and, but a knee is so significant that you have to be careful with it and you got to rehab it correctly, uh, for the long term of things. Um, it was hard to be on the sidelines and, uh, but watching the teams excel and, and go on that unbeaten streak was uh, made it a little bit easier. It was, it, it was easy to watch them and, and loved watching their success and their growth over that time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, uh, uh, we ask the serious questions here about uh, emotional <laughs> state during injuries and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jenna, overall, I mean, you had a great rookie season. I think a, a lot of rookies maybe hope to get into a couple games. You know what I mean? But you got into a bunch of games. Um, was there anything that surprised you or did the season go as you imagined? I mean, I'm sure going to the championship was on your vision board, right? I mean, what uh, what do you expect out of this season? Yeah, I think uh, coming in as a rookie again, as a rookie center back, you you don't expect much. You know, it, it's a tough it's a tough position to work your way into the starting lineup. So I think I really surprised myself coming out of preseason and playing a lot of minutes. Um I felt like I was playing well and training well. So um, I was happy that they were looking at my abilities rather than th the fact that I was a rookie. Um, so I think, I think honestly, I played a lot more than I had expected. 
Um, and then going into that injury, that, that was tough. Um, but I think I came out on the other side a little bit better. I had, I've, I've been there now. I've done that, and I've come back from it, and I'm back to playing um, like I know that I can. So I think just the roller coaster of emotion and um, – just the whole season. It's so long ago. You go from playing three or four months in college to nine months, which is just a really long time. So I think uh, the experiences and, and going all the way to the final was just uh, very valuable to have. And it was, just, you, I don't know. I think it's hard. I think that rookie season will be hard to top for any other rookie that comes into the league. Yeah. Agreed. Um, you know, you talk about center back being such a demanding position uh, uh, in demand position, tough to break into. And I'd say, I mean, you center backs on Casey current, you had to run a lot. I mean, you guys push up, you're not, you know, sitting back all the time. They're throwing balls over your head. And I don't know how many times, you know, you and Elizabeth ball just have to hoof it back just in a dead out sprint with these strikers. And it's like, damn, center backs have never been more of a demanding position than in this club. Is there something, is there something to that? I mean, is that the way uh, coach likes the defenders to play? Just push up like that. Yeah, I think uh, he likes to get us involved in the attack, and uh, we have some de- uh, center backs that are good on the ball. So uh, Matt wants to use that to his advantage, and I think uh, it's working well. Uh, we're doing what we can, and and we like to say, you know, we're um, attacking players that like to defend. So we like to build out of the back. We like to have the ball at our feet, um, and, you know, it just comes that we we also can defend and, and enjoy making big tackles. Absolutely. My partner and I follow you on social media, and it seems like every other post is you working with youth soccer and helping coach girls. What's it like to give back to a community um, that you grew up in? Um, it's pretty indescribable. Yeah, I, I knew when I got drafted back here that I would probably take up a role in coaching just because of how how much coaches in, influenced my uh, career and, and got me to where I wanted to be. So I think that's it's just an incredible opportunity to be back in Kansas city and, and see the difference that I'm making in these girls' lives. Um, and I knew that I needed that when I was younger. So I'm just happy to be able to do that for those girls. The, uh, you know, Jenna, last week it was announced that you are the, uh, first woman to coach in the, uh, MASL to coach soccer. Uh, so congratulations on that amazing opportunity. I, I think we all saw the press release, and my first thought is like, uh, she's not retiring. What is this? Oh no, what's happening? She just got here. This is crazy. I mean, she should do what she wants to do, of course. But I'm, I'm baffled. Uh, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, how did this opportunity come about? And and what is it that you that the comets want you to bring? What what are you bringing to them? Yeah, um, it came about pretty quickly and abruptly. Uh, it was an opportunity that was presented to me. And uh, being from Kansas City, I just had some connections. I've been. I've been around the Comets for a long time uh, growing up and playing here. Uh, I think just my role is to bring a different um, lens, so to say, to the Comets. You know, I don't play indoor, really. I played growing up, but um, it's different. Most of those guys come from playing outdoor, so they, they know the game. But uh, to have me there and be able to see different things that maybe Leo, Stefan, and Alan aren't seeing um, and just being a presence there. But I think I'm learning just as much from them that, they're looking to learn from me. So I think um, it's definitely a win-win situation. Well, not to mention what a way to be around the sport you love when you're not playing the sport you love. Uh, Why not be coaching in an organization? Not to mention you all got to just hang with Ted Lasso last week. So that's kind of (laughs) cool. Right. Yeah. (laughs) So Chris and I are real excited for you. We hope to, uh, we've never been to a comments game. So we're hoping to, to get out there sometime soon. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot different. There's a lot, there's music playing during live play, which is kind of different. A lot yeah. of lights. It's a fun time. <laughs> that, uh, there's cheerleaders. I was like, oh, snap. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheerleaders. Uh, there's like a lot of things going on in the stands. Uh, a lot of fan engagement, I would say. Um, it's, it's an experience. I think everyone should go. It, it's a fun time and it's really quite entertaining because the field's so small and, uh, plays so quick. Right. And tickets aren't going to break the wallet or anything like that either. Yeah. Very cool. So I got the most serious question here. You coach a kid's team named the koalas, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you stalking? You're stalking her no, social media, like bro. With Marlia Campbell. That's Oh that yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you coach a first grade team called the koalas and you coach the comets 
who's easier to coach? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm only a weekend to the Comets thing, so we'll see. They've, they've taken it easy on me a little bit, I think. Uh, the koalas have don't really have a filter. Um, <laughs> they tell me how it is, but I love them. Um, I also have the Wildcats. We can't forget about them. Okay. The Koalas is an iconic name, but I also have the Wildcats. They're second graders. Um, yeah, they're a fun time. They keep me on my toes for sure. Half the time I'm like, I don't think you're picking up anything that I'm teaching you. And then we'll go to games and I'm seeing a, like a pullback from a first grader. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe maybe we are learning some things. I, practice. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question was going to be, who's the most fun to coach? But it kind of seems like the koalas are definitely more fun to coach. Yeah, they, they, uh, I, I get a lot of artwork, a lot of uh, handmade crafts brought to me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So until the comments start doing that, I don't know. They got to oh, step awesome. it up, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you got, it's like kindergarten uh, teacher status. I love this. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it's very koalas. different. What a great name as well. You think koalas are cuddly and cute. Those things will rip your damn face off. Yeah, like they're absolutely no. vicious. <laughs> uh, Jenna, with this new coaching position, I mean, you're obviously busy. I don't know how you have time for anything else. Uh, so we do appreciate you being here. But that your off season is going to be filled with Comet stuff, obviously. Um, so not the traditional player uh, thinking about themselves when you got something else going on. But what are your goals for the off season? I mean, are you still kind of working through the injury? Uh, any, any skills you'd like to perfect for the field or, or what? Yeah, I think being able to work with the comments uh, is honestly going to help me in my off season and, and my personal goals for the, to play with the current. Uh, I'm learning a lot of things from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different guys that have come from different places. So uh, just to be able to, to listen and absorb things that they are doing in practice and games uh, is widening my knowledge of the game that I'm going to play with the current. So I think being able to uh, be there and learn and, and, you know, work on technical things with them uh, is helping me make better decisions, quicker decisions, because men are just so much faster. So I think uh, being around them and uh, expanding my knowledge is going to help me make quicker decisions, you know, uh, be more physical on the field and that sort of thing. Um, just trying to keep keep up so that I'm ready to go for the current uh, in February. You know, when you say men are faster, I don't know uh, if people have seen <laughs> CC Kaiser up on the wing running yeah. like a gazelle. She's yeah. absolutely insane. <laughs> Hamilton. Yes, she does look like a, a gazelle. We've told her oh, that that's before, the stride. It's just like, and she's gone. I don't. It doesn't <laughs> look like she's going fast, but she's taking off. <laughs> yes. Yes. The the soccer season is coming up pretty quickly, and we had what three month off season. But what are you most looking forward to for the next season with the current? Yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm really excited to be back and, uh, and in Kansas City. I'm excited that we are going to be in, in the new training facility for the full year. Um, that was a great transition for us uh, last April. I think it really brought out a lot of uh, good things uh, for the season. And, you know, it translated right at the same time as our unbeaten streak. So uh, given the resources and the the environment to thrive in is, is going to be good for the whole year. Uh, I'm excited that we've now made a, na a name for ourselves and, you know, people are expecting us to show up and, and compete uh, more so than we were last year. I think we surprised a lot of people, um, but I'm just excited to be, be back with the girls. Most of them are at home and I, I miss them. I'm, I'm here in Kansas city by myself a little bit. So oh. I'm excited for everyone to come back and, and start training again. Yeah, totally. Uh, when we had, Speaking of, of the girls, when we had Lola Bonta on, she she had dish some locker room dirt, you know, who the best and worst dancers are, uh, you know, who gets the ox cord and all that. Um, do you have uh, any uh, any jokers in the locker room? I mean, who is there a, a, a just a plain joker? Is it low? Is, is that an easy question? Uh, low is a pretty good joker. Yeah. Uh, Desi always has everyone uh, laughing and joking around. Uh, wouldn't say that's me. <laughs> wouldn't claim that title at all, but um, I'll laugh along with them. They'll make me laugh. I'm not making people laugh as much. Okay. All right. Focus then on the game. Jenna Weinbrenner, <laughs> just get me out on the field. I get it. Uh, what about the, like, who are your girls in the team? Like you got a, a squad that you like to hang out with or do things outside of, uh, of the game? Yeah, I think um, 
our rookie class is pretty close. The uh, roommate is Izzy Rodriguez, so uh, pretty close with her and, and her new puppy uh, that we had around for a little bit in the season. Excited for her and mostly the puppy to come back. Uh, a little bit lonely here, but – uh, other than that, you know, uh, Kate and Taylor, good friends, Addie and JC, uh, always joking around with Ebo on the back. Um, I would say mostly everyone on the team can't think of anyone that I couldn't hang out with for a day or two at a time. Yeah, it just seems like a, a tight knit, tight knit uh, group of like a family. You know, the whole team just feels really tight. So yeah, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask your overall feelings on breaking ground on this new groundbreaking stadium. Like what, uh, what's the feeling surrounding that? That's exciting. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. Like exciting. Like it's just uh, to be a part of the team. That's like the first to do that in the world is um, incredible. And to do it in your hometown is uh, like, it makes me speechless. I would say I was there, we were there for the groundbreaking obviously. Um, and I'm walking around and, and this man stops me and he's like, Jenna, Hey. And I'm like, and, and being from Kansas city, like a lot of people stop me and I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like if you're just a fan or like, I, I know you from like a few years ago, I'm not, I'm not really sure. And he's, it's like, it's Mike, your high B boss. I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like my boss from high B, like when I worked there, he's like there at the groundbreaking and VIP. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I like just random encounters like that. Um, are so cool to be able to do that and like uh, share those special moments with those people that I've, I've grown up with and they've grown up uh, supporting me. That's amazing. What, what'd you do at, uh, at high V were you checking? Uh, I was online kind of uh, was rowing the boat while we were building it, but uh, it was a crazy time during, I actually worked there during uh, 2020 during COVID. So uh, Ooh, okay. came home from college, didn't really know what to do without soccer. So got a job at the local high V um, help them start the Isles online program. What a wild nice. time. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know I, I wasn't playing soccer. There was nowhere to play. I was like, I don't, mom, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Got to make some money. I mean, yeah. got to do something. And now you're God dang. Now you're a pro soccer player and a coach. I don't even, I just think that's the coolest <laughs> thing in the world. So congratulations. And we're Thank you. proud to call you a KC daughter here, you know, and uh, I know everyone's real happy for you. So that's, uh, Gosh, that's Chris. You got anything else for Jenna? I don't. I mean, I think we covered okay. everything. It was fantastic to have you on. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you so much for having me. Thank you, Jenna. Hope we can uh, talk to you again. Maybe we'll see you at a, at a game uh, next year sometime. Yeah, or Comets game. We're gonna try and go to a Comets game. There it or, is. Or koalas. You never know. Or koalas. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so when weird. When girls come out to the game to the koalas yeah. game. That first would be. Didn't even know who they were. Let's have a thousand <laughs> one runner guys. fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're clearly we're dads. Nope, just uh, just fans <laughs> of the koalas. <laughs> I think they're gonna have a lot of fans after this. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Well, Jenna, thank you so much, and we uh, hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You take care. Buddy, oh, Jenna Weinbrenner, so nice to even be here. She was like, no, the pod. Yeah, I love those guys. I have to be on there. Is that what she said? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty oh, sure. I don't. My memory is foggy. I, but I mean, I love to hear her insight as to how she was drafted. Like her experience, by the way, of being drafted like such a long day, like five to six hours. Yeah, that is wild. And I remember watching that draft and every team got a timeout for every round. And the timeout was not really even timed. It was just, you know, until the, the team the, wanted to pick. What is the point? It was like Every 20 round? minutes per pick. It was absolutely insane. Like, And do the math. There's, you know, 12 teams in NWSL. So that's a lot. That's a well, long ass draft. Time. It was 10 at the time. Oh, it was 10 at the time. Yeah, it was 10 at the time. But it was absolutely brutal. It was that like, you Why could literally. Why was it 10 at the time? What are you talking huh? about? It was because 10 at the time? Yeah, because it was it was the the current's first year. Oh no, I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm mistaken. It was uh yeah, there was twelve. Apologies. She just got drafted this year, yeah. right? This was her rookie season. Right. Otherwise, our entire interview makes no <laughs> sense if no, that's what happened. I, I, I no, I was just thinking about the timeouts, which were for, which were the absolute worst in the first year of the Kansas City current. 
but the gotcha. timeouts were absolutely terrible. And you watched the whole thing? I watched the whole thing. Dedication, dude. It you was on here. Twitch. It was on the Twitch. draft correspondent. Uh, which we're gonna we're gonna talk about the draft uh, coming up for yeah. for January, January twelfth. Should we maybe we should live stream ourselves on Twitch watching the draft? <laughs> Anyone got eight hours to spend with us? Jeez. <laughs> Just seeing seeing our faces for that long, not good. I mean, eight hours that that's enough to do. Uh, you know, eat five meals. <laughs> yes. Absolutely bananas. Uh, long time, dude. I'm just. I I meant it. By the way, did you know Ted Lasso was there at the game? I heard. Yeah, that's uh, really cool. Sounds like the comments are a big deal. Uh, when you get Jason freaking Sudeikis coming out there to those games, I'm I'm excited. I want to make time to get out there. Um. It's not always easy. I think there's like some weekday games as well. Um, then they got to play like, you know, then they'll play like Sunday during something I got going on. So it's just, yeah. it's planning. It's planning. We'll make it work. We're excited for Absolutely. it though. Absolutely. Absolutely. I dude, we played indoor and when she's like, it's a lot faster. I, I wanted to be like, well, not when we played, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get you should have seen us know. play basically. Right. Like, She's like, men are, men are faster. I'm like, eh, you know, it's not, not in my Is experience. There... <laughs> she did say they're faster. Uh, have you seen Casey Curran's forwards? Those women will run the pants off of me. It'd be insane. Uh, yeah. Do you think that uh, – is there offsides in MASL? I, I don't know. So how could, how, I don't know how they could enforce that, going so fast back and forth like that. I, I, I don't think you could. I don't yeah. think it gets too quick. Because we, we played in a five-on-five five once, and there was no offsides. Right. So – with a smaller like futsal ball or whatever. And we played seven on seven. And we did play seven on seven as well. Yeah. So very cool. Um, buddy, what's, uh, uh, well, thanks again to Jenna Weinbrenner for being here. Um, she's more than gracious with her time. Uh, she didn't have to be here at all, but, uh, like I said, she's busy. She's she wildly could busy. Not, she could not wait to see our faces. It just made sense for her to be here. So, and thank you to the Casey current to making that happen as well uh uswnt info you said what's going on there yeah so because of the new cba with the u.s soccer federation the revenue is now split so the women uh with the u.s men's team making it out of the group stages the women um get 6.5 million dollars in revenue share to like split among the players it's split among the players, which is absolutely incredible because wow. if you look back the last two world cups that the women U S women's national team actually won combined, the amount they won was less than that. Two, two yep. combined was combined. less than what they're making yep. because their men counterparts went and did their job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's weird. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not against it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against that at all. Um, but it is crazy to know, like, I don't know, man. It'd be like me cheering you on at work for doing your job, knowing that I get a little, little kickback, a little something, something. Yeah. And, and you know, let's, we should remind ourselves too, that the U S women's national team brought a ton of revenue sure. into the U S soccer federation, a ton of yep. fans. I guarantee you people are women's, national team fans before men's national team fans some a yeah. lot of them because they're successful because they got the world cup patch on their jerseys yes it's in a weird position but we don't need to go into that <laughs> but it's a uh, it's just something the men's jerseys don't have when you talk about being proud of your national team <laughs> right what comes to mind first to me personally it's the women's national team i mean of course yeah. i'm, I'm proud of men's national team but sure you know when you talk about success on the international level yeah the first thing that should come to your mind is the women because they win world cups they're the best team in the the world consistently hey and that's something like i know we're all in in men's world cup phase right now everyone's enjoying all the group stages and things are about to kick off into the knockout rounds but you gotta know in a short seven months the women's world cup is here and we're now talking about that. And it's not in a country that does slavery. It's in <laughs> it's in Australia that has bugs the size of your face. Well, it's actually in New Zealand, but that's okay. Oh, they're not <laughs> I thought they were splitting it. Is it Australia and New Zealand splitting? It might be, yeah. Is that not but, a thing? I, yeah. Well, either way, uh, it, they're near each yeah. other and uh, you know, big bugs. I don't know if you like <laughs> bugs, but I'm not a fan. Yeah. 
Have you I'm seen gonna... me? There's like viral videos where they're like, oh, oh, mate, look at this. And I'm like, oh, shit, that is no. Like, what kind of spider is that? I, they have a lot of poisonous and venomous I, wildlife. I, I Some of the most dangerous own... in the world. I forget you own a spider. I just remembered, I, and I remembered to remind myself, like, never to come to your house because you have a spider. Uh, God, I, I, how dare I, I let my guard down? I, I feel like that is going to take away attention from the Jenna Weinbrenner interview, which I don't want to do. But yes, I have though. one, and you're more than happy to, to come and see it at any time. No, I'm not more than happy. It's, 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 a, it's a pet rock. It literally just sits and never moves. It, like, never moves. Do you put googly eyes on it, too, like a pet <laughs> rock? <laughs> no, but... <laughs> do you let it crawl on you absolutely absolutely not no oh, no what way. do you do i would it just sits in a it thing just sits there. Yep. a terrarium yep a little tupperware bin thing you don't bring it out and you're like look at my spider i like i like heavy metal music <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny you mentioned that because my spotify wrapped came out today oh. and it was like industrial metal as my man <laughs> you do listen to romstein you I, german yeah. fucker <laughs> and, and you know and i'm like god there's so many weird dots that kind of connect but if you like i you know i don't fit that description one would traditionally think of you're dark bro you're like um, buzz from home alone you got a big old tarantula <laughs> but you know i, I want to go back to jenna yeah and she's coaching more than one team by the way is she ever home like and first of all she lives with Izzy Rodriguez and Izzy's dog. Like, wish we could have had a dog appearance. Kind of sad it didn't happen. Shit, maybe we should get Izzy on and have a dog, too. Need to do it. It is a must. It, it will happen. Any I will interviews, all dogs on this podcast. A, any interviews, pets are always welcome. Just Absolutely. general rule. Let's get that out right now. Except for mine. They're assholes. <laughs> 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 they like to bark, so they stay in another room. <laughs> yeah. My cat would walk all up across my computer, so we don't want that. Oh yeah. Just turn it right off. Take it, yep. take you down, <laughs> buddy. It's going to be like, she's very busy. And while most athletes are like mm, rehab, uh, Lola Bonta is like traveling the world with her husband right now. She's in Honduras, uh, which, you know, with a lot yeah. of wildlife, by the way. So Vanessa and I are incredibly jealous. We're trying to live through her, her right. social media. So a lot of big bugs though. A lot, a lot, <laughs> and spiders. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Probably koalas though huh no I don't, think, I don't think there's any koalas in honduras but is there not know. i don't know you Euca- i know they like uh, eucalyptus leaves i know that's a thing yeah. uh but they you know i think that what i was saying is lowe's traveling to honduras for god's sakes yeah. and <laughs> jenna weinbrenner's like mm, i think i'm gonna work <laughs> i'm gonna go coach men or i mean we've talked about this before though um i think she has to work. I mean, I don't know what a rookie contract is, uh, but I think make a little money coaching on the side isn't a bad little gig. So, I mean, like you mentioned, she's going to take that knowledge and she's going to take it oh. and bring it right back. Bring it right back and use it herself on the field. Man, if she, you know how coaches kind of insert themselves into practice sometimes and yeah. be there for like a second pass opportunity or, or a, a you know, a, a service or something like that. She's going to get used to playing fast and, and fast twitch muscles are going to be activated all over the place. She's going to come on the field and, and be running past CC Kaiser on the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Making that deep run. Unreal though. Uh, I mean it though. There, there were a few times when she like, she had to go toe to toe with some strikers, man. They It's crazy. They gotta, they go up so far like that and more power to them. Yeah, no, no, it- I'm excited it, to see her being a rookie to go in there and then, you know, coach and to, you know, to see, I just want to see her grow as a player, right. On and off the field or, or on the field as a player on the field as a coach. Uh, and that's, you know, that's all you can kind of hope for. And, and I can't wait to see her back on the field, whether that's yeah. starting or whether that's coming in with some quality minutes, she's going to contribute a lot. Is uh, uh sorry. I didn't even, I didn't want to ask her cause I didn't want to feel like a dummy. Is she completely, injury free right now or is it still a process i think she's injury free i think she's she was available i believe was she available for the championship yeah okay but she didn't play did she no yeah. um no she didn't play okay i can't even remember man that was such a long ass weekend it... uh what a wild <laughs> time that was with you so uh hey maybe we'll do it again next year that'd be fun yeah 
I'm anytime they go to the championship, you can count me in. So no doubt we're going to make it happen. Uh, Anything else you want to talk about before we uh, get out of here? Yeah, just kind of going around the league and and just touching on something relating to Kansas City current. Um, Abby Smith, former um, Kansas City current goalkeeper who was traded to Portland for AD French. Um, She was a unrestricted free agent. She signed with Gotham. So just kind of a cool little Kansas City connection. Um, Still playing? That's good. Yep. So I think she's probably going to be the backup, but I think she can provide good, good competition with their starters. So, um, okay, nice to see a, a player who is no longer with our team um, continue to to do well. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Um, I feel like I had something else to say, but I can't remember now. Do you like my ring light? By the way, can you see my ring light? Oh, is that? I, oh, well, yeah. It's nice. I That's need why to you get can one. see you can see all my pores and all my Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> you did it to show off your shoes right that's yeah, the main reason too. that's why i angle it because you know when you got when you yeah. got them you gotta show them off sneak sneakerhead style so yeah but yeah, i'm gonna wrap it up you good for that yep all right folks thank you so much uh hey did you know by the way we're in the uh casey current discord that's right people are posting us in there saying this is great you guys had danielle on we love this uh so danielle uh made us real popular so thank you last week and uh Post it in the Discord, people. We got Jenna Weinbrenner. It's exciting stuff. Join the Blue so, Crew. Support Join women's soccer. Blue yeah. Crew, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for being here. This does not happen without you listening. Um, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, five stars on Spotify, wherever you listen to us. Uh, it doesn't matter just as long as you're listening. So uh, hit us hit us up on Twitter and Instagram. We're at no other pod at Dan Couser, at Chris Wright21. Um, you can send us an email at nootherpod at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, if you got questions about the off season, the, the season coming up, let us know. We'll get to them. We'll read all interview, all, uh, all reviews and questions on here and make this your guys' show. So that being said, uh, I am Daniel. He's Chris. And we love you so very much. Goodbye.